Good day and welcome to the Fairmont Hamilton Princess, where today I am sitting down with Mr. Steve Stonberg, who is the Chief Operating Officer of Bittrex Global, a Bermuda licensed entity. And it is a pleasure to speak to you, Stephen. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you today mm -hmm. in Bermuda. Yes, absolutely. This is a part of Tech Week, and we want to showcase what it is that we're doing in Bermuda. So I'll just start by asking you a few questions. And can you tell us a little bit more about Bittrex and what Bittrex plans to do? Sure. Bittrex Global is a pretty well-known cryptocurrency exchange. We've already been operating for many years. Um, we have a sister company in the U.S., and we operate out of right now out of Liechtenstein. Mm -hmm. um, our main operations, we trade multiple tokens, um, everything from simple tokens like Bitcoin and Ethereum all the way through through some pretty sophisticated altcoins. Okay. We have about 300 different tokens. We have credit card on-ramps. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer fiat on-ramps. And now we are expanding the business by setting up another licensed entity here in Bermuda. Okay, that's excellent. And uh, what type of businesses do you think will be operating out of Bermuda using, I guess, our, our regulatory framework? So we like to be regulated, mm -hmm. unlike some of our competitors. Uh, so we're not just one regulator, but now we have two. So we've looked at China now, uh, Bermuda, with the BMA. So the reason to come here, it, it's just to do some things that fit better with a, a more forward-thinking regulatory framework. Okay. Um, especially the under the Digital Assets Business Act, mm -hmm. you don't have a distinction between securities tokens and utility tokens. So some of the things like derivatives, to mm -hmm. start with, and we're, we're looking at offering um, uh, a leveraged t uh, derivative token here, that would require a banking license in Europe Absolutely. because it's derivatives or securities. Mm -hmm. And obviously we'll be careful which jurisdictions we sell that into, but we can certainly sell those into jurisdictions that don't require a banking license. So yeah. there's sort of win-win things like that where you know, we can rebalance our business between the European regulatory environment and here. Okay, so you say, I guess, the flexibility of the regulations, possibly. The flexibility, absolutely. Absolutely, I know that we've certainly done a lot of work continuing to modify the Digital Asset Business Act. It's about uh, 24 months now since it's been in effect, so I think that's helpful, and we continue to um, uh, work to upgrade that. So what will their services enable uh, when they're uh, done here? So again, it should offer all the same functionality that we're already offering on the exchange. So okay. credit cards, fiat, we're setting up, you know, we're replicating all of our bank banking relationships here. So the Bermuda entity will have its own relationship with the various banks where we already have accounts. Okay, excellent. Will you be able to offer your services to locals or would it not we be? We certainly able? hope to. Oh, really? Well, Absolutely. I, I sincerely hope so as well because a lot of times it's difficult for persons in Bermuda to access those uh, services. So they can already access the exchange in Liechtenstein and okay. then they, they will certainly be able to onboard here as well. All right, well, that's excellent. That's, uh, that's very good. You spoke about, um, you know, the, the difference between the utility tokens and and, uh, and and how, I guess, with our um, approach, which is a little bit different. Can you delve into that a little bit more? Sure, I mean, I think that one of the big things, and especially for a lot of the U.S. players, so Bittrex Global does not operate in the U.S. Yes. Because of that very, so the European regulations are already a bit more clear mm -hmm. about that distinction. But you know, if you, you know, for those who aren't that familiar with crypto or who are reading about this, most of the trouble you see that people have in the U.S. with the SEC where it's a bit of a gray area, and they think they're issuing what's a utility token, mm -hmm. which is not a security under the traditional securities laws, and where people have gotten in trouble is if they issue a token and then retroactively somebody says, actually, that was a, a security, gotcha. you didn't do it as a security offering, you need, and to do securities, you have to have a bank license, you know, all the traditional sorts of things, which in Europe, you know, we can do things where we can't do them in the U.S., mm -hmm. but we won't do securities tokens, gotcha. because we're not a bank, mm -hmm. and we don't want to be a bank. Where, but in Bermuda, there's a bit more flexibility. You don't have that distinction. Mm -hmm. Here in Bermuda, obviously, you have to be respectful of where you're going to sell those tokens. But if we're selling them to jurisdictions that don't have those requirements, there's a bit more flexibility here. So you don't have to have this EU sort of or US sort of straitjacket on a global business. You can obviously have the right regulation for the right customer base Okay, here. that makes sense. And um, I appreciate that, uh, certainly. Um, so. Upon licensing, of course, planning to hire, what are the type of roles which you're looking for? So right now it's mainly uh, compliance. Mm -hmm. So we are already in the market right now for a chief compliance officer on okay. Ireland. Obviously we have one who's based in Liechtenstein and we'll probably be hiring a lot of compliance staff. So yeah. we've actually already started interviewing some candidates. Oh, that's excellent. Been that's very excellent. impressed by the quality of the people we found so far. Well, it's very weird because no one wants to be known for being strong on regulation and compliance, but it seems to be Bermuda's strength. <laughs> so, which, which is great because uh -huh. you need to have talented staff on Ireland. So. Yes, I, I don't want to give a plug for my wife, but she just finished her anti-money laundering certification, and there's so many people that are going through that here, and it's something that we certainly are promoting 
recognizing that as financial services continues to evolve, compliance is certainly something uh, that is uh, important. Well, so, I think it's one of the things that actually attracted us mm -hmm. about coming here. Not only would we get regulated, but we knew that we could hire, mm -hmm. there's trained and qualified staff here on the island, which mm -hmm. If, that we couldn't have come here without that. Gotcha. Well, I think that goes very well into my next question, because it's a question of why did you decide on Bermuda? So, again, we, so we looked at it as we already have sort of what I would call an onshore. We're in Liechtenstein, which is MIFID and EU regulatory framework, but we run a global business and not, you know, for some of our non-EU clients, it doesn't make sense to subject them to EU regulation. We so. do want to be regulated. Mm -hmm. We obviously don't want U.S. regulation for our non-U.S. business. And, you know, I've been to most of the other sort of what I would call non-EU or non, you know, offshore jurisdictions. And you know, Bermuda is one of the most well-known already. You have a very big reinsurance business here. There's a real regulator here. I think there are other jurisdictions who shall remain nameless where some of our competitors have gone and there's de facto no regulation. Gotcha. And that's, that's fine for them and it's a lot easier to be set up, but you know, it's really not safe for their customers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I think that that's something that's very important when we talk about safety. And that's a message that which we've certainly been saying, that you know, a regulator is there to make sure that they protect consumers um, as well uh, for those services. So what was your experience like, I guess, we have a concierge service that we offer to make sure we work, work people through the process. How was your experience with the Beat is concierge? So actually we work with the government concierge, okay. with um, Shavana Simpson, who has been fantastic. So I think, you know, even from outreaching to us to, mm -hmm. to entice us back to the island, updating on us on some of the developments here, really rolling out the red carpet and setting up all of the, the trips and, and different sort of important meetings and vendors and there's ongoing support. So I'd okay. say it's been excellent. Well, I would say that Siobhan is certainly uh, excellent, but I'd say it's good to know that the team that the we team have set up is yes. working uh, and because it's something that we tried to actually get better at uh, since I was first elected. So I think it is something that is important that we continue to push and to press that. So I'm happy to hear feedback that it is actually working. So uh, I will also say, how's your experience been with our very tough regulator? It's been tough, but in a good way. I mean, that's why we came here. So I think, you know, they've been extremely thorough. You know, it's not a new regulator for those who aren't familiar. You know, there's a most of the world's reinsurance industry is here in, on the island. So that's a pretty tough regulator. And I think they've taken the same standard and applied it to cryptocurrencies. OK. Absolutely. So what do you think is, um, or your opinion, because we've decided to, as you said, go on in a different way than other jurisdictions which may be trying to attract digital asset businesses to their shores. So what is your um, uh, opinion on, I would say, Bermuda's approach to um, having a broad definition of digital asset versus something that's more specific? Well, I think that's hugely helpful. So I think, you know, it's offshore and that it's, you know, and it's flexible in the same way that with the insurance industry, I'd use that, it's a great analogy. I think that's why so many insurance companies came here because it was a lot of flexibility. This was like 30 or 40 years ago and there was a lot of noise around it and, and now the whole reinsurance industry is here. So I think, you know, I'm sure there are some who will say it's a bit too aggressive or too forward thinking, but you know, it's highly regulated. The things that matter, like any money laundering and KYC, there's that's there's no flexibility there. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, crypto is such a new space. Why do you want to impose this sort of straitjacket, which they're doing in Europe or the U.S.? The U.S. one's less horrible than the U.S. one, but it's still pretty tough, and it's sort of a movable feast. Whereas here, the regulation is the regulation. There's no EU or some other thing that's going to come and change it. So I think you have the certainty, the clarity, and it's it's the right framework. Which again, all these things sort of attracted us to come here. Well, that's good. I mean, from our perspective, we certainly worked on that to try to make sure that we make it as flexible as possible. I remember when we first started by going through this process and the Bermuda Monetary Authority was incredibly helpful actually in giving advice to the government. And it's a thing which I call the holy trinity, where it's the government, the regulator, and industry working together to make sure we craft the uh, right type of uh, solutions and uh, regulation that works. And I know that we're continuing uh, to evolve that act. So it's, it'll be um, interesting to see uh, what happens as we go forward. Uh, so how does that definition, though, become more, I would say, um, confusing as the technology involves? And of course, digital asset technology is evolving rapidly. I think that it's just, you know, getting every all the different counterparties up to speed because you can do when you can do anything, mm -hmm. you can do stocks, derivatives. I mean, it's almost, you know, you still have to then spend a lot of time with the regulator, getting them comfortable, then thinking about where you're selling these things into. So. 
it, it gives you tons of possibility, but a ton more issues you have to then sort of work through. So there's lots more money for the lawyers, as always, <laughs> which is great for them and for the Bermuda great, lawyers. Great, so, great for the lawyers, certainly. Yes. Absolutely. But one of the things, when you say that, one of the things which we really want to do is to try to get our process to a place where it's more simplified. So I do know that we're currently out to consultation with uh, simplifications to our Digital Asset Business Act to introduce a new type of license, which is the test license, where there's a lower barrier to entry so people can test their products right. in a little bit. Um, in a little bit, I would say, less expensive fashion. Right. Uh, but uh, certainly, our, we have an excellent legal community here, so we continue to work and support them. And so exactly. thank you for supporting them. Let's switch gears a little bit, because everyone wants to know about stable coins and digital dollars and all the rest. Um, is there any one of the initiatives that we certainly have, Bermuda, is this thing that we launched last year at Tech we call the Currency Standard, and something which we want to continue to go ahead and uh, promote. Uh, what is your view about the possibility of uh, Bittrex uh, offering a type of uh, Bermuda digital dollar? So we're already, that's funny you should ask, we're already in discussions with um, Dennis Pitcher, who is the FinTech advisor, and approached us, and we, we definitely would love to help the government, and we could certainly facilitate that. So we're looking at an idea where the exchange, Bitrix Global and Bermuda, could be the issuer mm -hmm. of a token, and it could be backed by Bermuda dollars. And we, we have a bank account shortly here with one of the local banks, and we're talking to them about custodying the Bermuda dollars. So mm -hmm. we'd be backed, similar to Tether, but mm -hmm. unlike Tether, you'd actually know if the money's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be audited by an actual auditor, and. and it would be there from day one. So it would be very straightforward. And it's very interesting. One of the things in which I say is that the Bermuda dollar itself is a physical token, almost, of a U.S. dollar mm -hmm. as it's one-to-one. -one. But I think the whole definition and thoughts of where we talk about you know, a, a token which is backed by a dollar, our view is that we're trying not to make it exclusive, that we're trying to make it you know, interoperable and to allow persons to come into the market and go ahead and I'll do that. So I'm happy to know that it's something that you've uh, certainly um, uh, have been experiencing a, a, um, or, or not experimenting with, but are looking forward to try to do. So I think that Absolutely. it is certainly something to participate in the currency standard, which I know that we're launched. And so one of the things that I've always said is that people don't get why it's important. People are like, well, why should I use this dollar instead of this? What, in your view, uh, makes, uh, I guess I would say, digital tokens a more attractive use of uh, interacting and exchanging value? Well, I think it's the same reasons, especially in a lot of underbanked, and this isn't an underbanked country by any mm -hmm. standard, but. You know, I think in some of the, you know, the analogy would be in some of the sort of, you know, more developing nations where there isn't a proper banking system, mm -hmm. just like telephone, you know, mobile phones have allowed them to skip sort of having to have landlines mm -hmm. and you can go with the cryptocurrency enables you to sort of not have to deal with a banking system where, you know, sending a bank wire, even dollars from here, mm -hmm. it takes three days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just quite inefficient. So you can go from not having a bank to having something that settles instantaneously. Mm -hmm. So it's a much more efficient way of processing payments. and you can get a real you know, leg up on some other jurisdictions. Absolutely. So I think that's why it makes sense. And also certainly reduce fees for uh, uh, businesses as well. Oh, it's, right it's much now. cheaper. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially versus credit cards where yes. you have massive fees. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, people are now paying, some businesses are paying three and 4% on some of their transactions. You know, large supermarkets might get it down to one and a half percent, but still uh, that makes um, a big difference. So I know that that's something that I'm really excited about. And I'm excited about the direction of which we're going of trying to invite persons, license entities to go ahead and to do this and to, you know, experiment with it so that we can foster that uh, community of innovation uh, here on island, uh, certainly. Um, so, what do you think is um, the potential to have a, I would say, Bermuda-backed and Bermuda-audited government-supported coin? Do you think that that's actually reality what you're discussing? That's exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, here, I mean, there's many different ways you could do it. I saw the Bahamas just announced that there, the central bank's going to issue one. Mm -hmm. It's the same sort of thing. They're only issuing, well, the article said $48,000. So. Okay that's not really going to be that helpful <laughs> to, really? to start with. Yeah. But you know, we can be, you can have a private company issue, so we could be the issuer. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the government wanted to issue. So I think that's really, you know, all options are, we, so our standpoint is we would like to be facilitative and helpful, mm -hmm. and we'll do whatever makes the most sense for all parties involved. Do you think that there'll be interest, I would say, from the international sphere for something that is a non-USD digital dollar, but it is technically in some way, shape, or form pegged to the U.S. Oh, I think, so I think, as you said, the Bermuda dollar is tether, I mean, to begin with, <laughs> right? It's just, it's pegged to the dollar. I don't, I don't want to say that. <laughs> you can edit that out. Um, <laughs> the Bermuda dollar technology. is tether, got you. But huh? it's, you know, it's a form of a pegged currency, mm -hmm. similar to the way, you know, tether is pegged to mm -hmm. U.S. dollar. Um, I think there should be a ton of interest, just that it's it's dollars. So mm -hmm. it's you're creating a better stable coin. It's an offshore stable coin, mm -hmm. where you have it's audited. It's under a regular you know, 
again, we haven't sorted out the details mm -hmm. yet, but you know, depending on how the BMA would want to regulate this, I think it should have a lot of interest, actually. Okay. That's good. Well, I mean, it's certainly something to look forward to, and uh, persons have been wondering and when they're going to actually see how fintech can affect their lives. And the times when people are going to be able to, as uh, people say, send money or share money or share value as easy as you do send a WhatsApp. And I think then people will then begin to get it. But people actually need to see that in action. So I know that we're doing um, a small pilot right now with another Bermuda licensed company, but I look forward to uh, testing out uh, what Bittrex has in store. Great. Without question. So what are your future plans for Bermuda? Now that you're here, of course, setting up and getting ready, do you think there's any future thoughts or expansion out in Bermuda and different types of things which we do here? So we, we've leased an office here. Mm -hmm. We've got you know, a bunch of desks and we've ordered all the equipment, mm -hmm. so we're waiting for that to show up. Now we have to fill it with people. But I would imagine um, you know, we'll hire mostly compliance officers here. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the things like technology, that's all done sort of in other jurisdictions where it makes sense. But here, we, you know, there's a real need to hire compliance staff, and we can also hire some of the stuff to support our Liechtenstein business from here as well. Okay. I think there's more sort of compliance mm -hmm. staff availability here than in Liechtenstein, which is even smaller than Bermuda. Um, so then th there's sort of that um, kind of growth, and the other things we're looking at too, not just crypto, but insurance. Okay. So if we wanted to go into the insurance industry, this is a natural place mm -hmm. to do it, and crypto insurance is an area where it's so new and there's so little capacity, we, we're definitely thinking about potentially setting up an insurance company here as well. Oh, that's great. I mean, Bermuda is the world's risk capital. Exactly. That's what we like to call ourselves, and I think that it's been demonstrated in times like this. You know, there's been some recent storms and hurricanes of which they say, but you know, we our buildings are resilient, and just like our insurance industry um, is resilient as well. So, why do you think other companies should consider Bermuda? I think for all the reasons we've chosen it, you know, if they don't, if they already are existing in the industry and they want sort of a regulated place that's not, you know, quite as onshore for some of their, you know, offshore clients, mm -hmm. or if they're new to the business and they just need a place to set up and it's not on their radar, they just should definitely come here. I mean, okay. the government will go, out, you know, as we are here today, <laughs> go out of their way to assist you. Um, and the regulators, you know, it, like most small places, you can have access to government and you can have access to. Uh, the regulator, so you can have a much more interesting dialogue than when you go to uh, the U.S. or some big place, or even in Switzerland, where we have an office but we're not regulated. That's still we're not going to get meetings with the regulator. Gotcha. That's why we chose Liechtenstein. It's mm -hmm. only forty thousand people, mm -hmm. and it's sort of similar setup. You can meet the government, meet with the regulator. Okay. So I think that it makes complete sense to come here. Got it. So we're in a time of uh, a pandemic around the globe. Um, how has your experience been um, in Bermuda uh, with, I guess, our, the way that we've set up our testing infrastructure? It's, it's been amazing, and in fact, you know, we're so lucky to be in a jurisdiction like, where it's open for business. You notice we're here not wearing a mask, and I've come here from the I'm United nice States them. where yeah, we have them. <laughs> I have my very nice Bermuda mask, ah, which I'm very good. sad I didn't get to wear but, um, for this meeting. But the, um, you, know, you can actually come here as an American. Like, you take a COVID test mm -hmm. before you come, so you know everybody in the plane with you has had a test, mm -hmm. and you get tested in the airport, and then you just get a test every four days. So you feel completely safe here, everything's open, you can go to your office here. It's great, we can't even do that where I live in the US. Well, I'm happy, I mean, we've done a lot of work to make sure that we can uh, have people feel safe inside the country, and it's certainly working for us, and we have to continue to go. I'm very worried about how many tests that we're going to have to keep doing, and testing, and testing, and testing. Yep. But as the technology gets better, I'm sure that we'll be able to handle it. But I'm happy that you uh, had a good experience. Is there anything else that you'd like to say uh, to the people who are watching? Just, you know, definitely consider Bermuda, especially, you know, for any type of business, not just crypto. I know you're offering this uh, other regime where people can come and live Absolutely. here for a year. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend if you're bored of COVID in the U.S., come here. Mm -hmm. You can actually go out and, mm -hmm. you know, there's the, everything's open and it's extremely safe and clean and it's, a, you know, very business friendly place in general. I think for crypto and, and for digital assets, again, there's an interesting regime. If you're not familiar with it, get take a look at the Digital Assets Business Act and you know, definitely consider putting your crypto business here. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Stephen. I appreciate the time to chat. Pleasure, and thank you for, for talking to us today. We're not allowed to shake hands. We this can elbow tap. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you.